It's, it's, a, it's a deep rooted passion of mine, this sport. I love it dearly. I love this company dearly, the Ultimate Fighting Championship. What a company, what a company to be involved in. Um, I need this, of course, I will be, I will be involved in this game f for my entire life. Conor McGregor. Hello, sir. Welcome back to BT Sport. Oh, it's been yes. too long, man. Yes, it has. How well, you? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm setting up for a period of activity, yeah? consistent activity, so we've got a lot more work to be done, so happy days. It's good you, to be back here on BT Sport. Have you got a lot more suits maybe to uh, accompany you oh, for a few of, of these interviews or what? Of course I do, you know that. This one is not yet to be released, so we're, we're, this, this one will be... Uh, it's coming onto the site soon. So. How, are you, how are you enjoying all the business activities, yeah, of course, the fashion and things yeah, it's like fun. that? It's fun, it's fun. You know, it's very entertaining. I've, I've just engaged in things that I'm passionate about, things that I enjoy, you know what I mean? And I've turned them into, into businesses, and into revenue streams for myself, and I'm very, very happy with that. You know, of course, of all the businesses I'm involved in, there is no business like the fight business, so it's good to be back here now for a competition. Well, that's what I was going to ask you, right? Because money-wise, <clears throat> we don't need to be here. You've mm. done well. You've got that generational wealth. You know, mm. you've, you've done extremely well over the last few Thank years you, to sir. create I that. that. Legacy-wise, if, if we're making a history book with the UFC, mm. your face will probably be on the front of it with some of the records that you've managed to achieve as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why are you here? What, what, what's driving you to come back the and love, fight? The love, the love of competition, the love of this. I, I, I would not have achieved it, the heights that I achieved without the love for the sport, and it's hard to just let that go, no matter what number is in the account. So. I'm here for the love of competition, and I have a hell of an opponent here in front of me. He has phenomenal records also. Mm -hmm. I look forward to taking them or getting a hold of them. You know, I was excited with the Donald fight because Donald has such an array of UFC opponents that stretch from middleweight to, to down to featherweight, and you know, when you fight a man, you, you engage with his opponents also, so my, my, my reach within the UFC stretches far and wide, and I'm very, very uh, pleased with that and excited with that. And we've prepared well and we're ready. Obviously, you have had a fight since 2016, as I just mentioned, our last types of conversation here on BT Sport. Do you think the game has changed in that period of time, in that three-year period? Um, not necessarily, no, I think. No, not necessarily. It's, they're just trying to replicate certain things, you know, but I'm back and I'm here to change it once again. Why welterweight? Welterweight excites me. First of all, it's what I weigh. And there's a lot of good stuff going on at welterweight, right? Dana says the guys, there's, there's a couple of guys that are too big for me and this and that, and I disagree. I fought at welterweight. I felt very, very good at welterweight. Dropped a much heavier man multiple times over. Outlasted, outlasted the man also, a, a known cardio machine at welterweight. So I feel good at this weight. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just happy days. It's a, it opens up more options for me. So I'm very excited about that. We've heard you talk about the season, the Conor mm -hmm, McGregor season. Mm -hmm. it, does that, is that season well to wait? Or will there maybe be a flirt with 155? Yeah, oh, of course, of course. Yeah, it's, it, it's whatever. It's just activity. You know, if you had to set out dates and this and that, and, you know, God, God willing, I come out of this um, unscathed, which I believe I will, mm -hmm. um, I'd probably go back again straight away for the next event, you know. So um, uh, for me, this season is just activity. Activity. So it can be any weight. And, yeah. I could make 155 this, this Friday. I could make 155, no problem, this Friday. Well, not no problem. Well, it would be no problem, but it would, it would be tough, but yeah. I could make it, so. Just one breakfast rather than two, yeah? Just one breakfast rather than two. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I made an error of that on the first Diaz fight when I went up to 170. I was kind of throwing it all mm. in. I've done a little bit more strategic this time, even more strategic than, than I have done for the, than I did do for the rematch. So I'm in a great spot, physically, mentally, and I'm prepared. You mentioned activity there, obviously. Fans fell in love with you because of that activity. Mm. You were out, it, sem it seemed like, every single event for a, long, for a long period of time, but over the last three years, we've not, mm. we've not necessarily seen mm. that. A question for you, mixed martial arts needs you. Mm. Do you need mixed martial arts? Yeah, most certainly. It's, it's a, it's a deep-rooted passion of mine, th this sport. I love it dearly. I love this company dearly, the Ultimate Fighting Championship. What a company. What a company to be involved in. Um, I need this, of course. I will be, I will be involved in this game f for my entire life. Being, being focused in the world of mixed martial arts, do you think it affects other aspects of your life as well in order to keep you, like you say, on the, yeah. on the straight and narrow yeah. in a way? Well, martial arts, right, it, it give, that's what it gave me originally. That's what it gives young, young, young people and yeah. young men and young boys and young girls. It gives them focus and discipline and dedication. and That's what it done for me. And I suppose it kind of recenters me, right? I mean. I've had tremendous success elsewhere, and I continue to do so. And, 
But when you go back and you prepare for a martial arts bout, you know, it, it does something to your, to your focus and your discipline and it just sharpens you up, so. Um, and that in turn helps everything else, so. Excellent, it's like a perfect storm for me and I'm very, very happy with it, very happy with my life, very proud of what I've done and what I continue to do. And, um, you know, this Saturday, January 18th, I will make more records, I will create more records and I'm very excited about this one. I know, I know you're a sharp guy and you analyse obviously everything you do in the octagon but obviously everything that you do outside the octagon as well. And over that three year period that you've competed once, do you look at maybe mixed martial arts not being in your life as, as prominent, maybe affecting the things that, we, yeah, probably, that we've seen come in? probably, yeah, probably. And you know, like I said, it gives you that focus, it gives you that drive, so I wasn't as, I wasn't as involved in it as I should have been. And idle hands, right, what, what did he say about idle hands, so. That's it. Um, it's good to be back, I'm focused, I have, I have my blinkers on and I'm in a great spot and I look forward to showcasing my skills, my newfound skills, you know, I fight very differently now. I'm, 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 I'm grown now, you know, so I'm moving differently in the gym, I'm str hitting differently with my, with, with my old coaches brought back and certain things have been reinforced and very excited. What have you learned? The fans are in for a treat. What have you learned about yourself over that three year period? You know, I've learned a lot about myself, you know, it's just every day is a learning experience in this, in this world and I continue to approach life with a beginner mind. And, mm -hmm. and that allows me to continue to rise. And I've, got to, I've got to say, as a fan, mm -hmm. I'm enjoying this, Conor McGregor. You know, mm -hmm. the, the guy, I mean, we were unfortunate that we didn't get to see you in the build-up to the Habib fight, mm. and we saw interviews and various things like mm. that. You seem a very, very mm. different guy. Mm. You seem very mm. centred, mm. and I don't know whether that's because the focus is there, mm. because you're back in the world of exactly. mixed martial arts? Exactly, exactly. No, it's, it's, it's the focus is there, simple as, you know, I'm just focused. I was not as focused, you know. It's, uh, it was almost like my job was done after that Brooklyn incident. What, what, what needed to happen happened and the belt was just an after effect and um, I wasn't fully focused on it, I wasn't fully committed with it and that led to a different, a different man and, and now I have, I have corrected my, my, the things I needed to correct and mm -hmm. I'm in a good state of mind with that. For that bout you were physically there but were you fully mentally there do you think? Um, a different kind of mental was there most mm. certainly you know. Um, it was just a wild surround, just a wild couple of months around that whole bout, right? The whole incidents that happened, and um, it just is what it is, and we'll get it again. When? <laughs> as soon as it's there, you know. And maybe, maybe in the, maybe in Brooklyn. When is that? April. That yeah. could very well happen. It was offered to me. I was, I was. Uh, it was offered when the t they couldn't come to a, d a deal with Tony. And they offered it to me and I took it straight away and, and then... To fight a beef in Brooklyn. Yeah, 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 because it was, it was scheduled or rumoured or something and mm -hmm. the, the, there was obviously something going on back, back behind closed doors and then Dana hit me up and offered it to me and I, I accepted it, of course, so it's, it's going to happen. It will happen. Do you think that fight will fall off? Do you think, it, do you think either one of them well, will... Well, history, I mean, history of tells course, yeah. that they both pull out multiple times, right? I mean, possibly. I've seen you speaking about boxing. Mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. We had a dance with Mayweather. Yeah. Made some good money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you done with boxing? Or? Hell no, hell no. I will, I will secure a world title in boxing, most yeah. certainly, yes. What um, weight are you thinking about? The weight, I'm not sure. I'll have to go through all the weight divisions and, 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 and check out all the champions, right? Mm -hmm. I'll have to see who's, who holds titles in, in, the, in, the, in the divisions. Thankfully, boxing has so many world titles, you can just pick and choose. And, and there's also so many weights, so... Uh, I haven't like gone deep into, obviously I'm immersed in, in where I'm at right now, but boxing and the boxing world title is, a, is an aspiration of mine and, a, and an aspiration that I will achieve. You linked yourself to Manny Pacquiao the other day, he's got one of those belts at welterweight, hasn't he? The regular world what, championship. What, what's welterweight again? One, 147. Mm, yeah, it's a little low, it's a little low. I, no, I, could, I made 150, 153 with Floyd, no problem. I'm the former 145 pound champion. We'll see what happens, we'll see. What do you make of people maybe crossing over from boxing to mix martial arts <coughs> rather than the other way around. I haven't really seen it, have you? <laughs> no, no, no. There's a lot of talk though, maybe with yeah. Clarissa Shields, maybe coming this way right. to fight Amanda Nunes. Right, right, that's right. What that, do you think? Uh, do you think, think boxers can live in this world? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, with the correct preparation, you know, we're, we're com combat fighters, right? Com combat specialists. So, and um, with the correct preparation and the correct teachings, you can you can learn with the correct focus. But I've yet to see it. I've mm. yet to see it. You know, 
I, I went that way and uh, James Tony was one that he came yeah, out. Yeah, he had to go. But uh, it's exciting, right? It's what the I know Tyson's been talking about it a lot. Tyson's talking like I've Tyson keeps saying uh, I, I mean him spoke and I was I said I trained and I'm, I never spoke to Tyson in my life. So I don't know what he's saying, but it's a fun, <laughs> it's a it's not a bad little story, so I let it kinda roll. Um, he's not, coming to the weekend. That's right, I heard that, yeah. Cool, cause Tyson's a good man. I, I like Tyson. He's a good, great boxer, phenomenal boxer. Probably, yeah. a, probably the best natural boxer in the heavyweight division at this time. So, you know, who knows? I, I, know, I, 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 I wouldn't say he is just saying he'd do it and not do it, like a lot of them do. Like, like them do. I'd say Tyson would probably do it in, in time, so you never know. Maybe we could set something up. I'd need, I would not be holding mitts for him or anything, but I'd certainly, <laughs> if he wanted to be trained by me or even... Um, educated by me, I'd have to see him. I, I'd need to see him in, in certain positions, in certain situations. I need him to spar a heavyweight. I need to see him deal with the leg kicks. I need to see him in bottom position. Mm -hmm. And then I'd, then I'd assess that, and then I'd send them off. And then, then uh, I would tell him what work he needs to do, and then off he goes. You know, that that would be probably something I could do for Tyson. But I, I found it funny that he was saying we talked and all this. He's a madman, Tyson, isn't he? I, I never <laughs> spoke to the man in my life. But. Yeah, uh, it'd be cool that he's going to be there. And maybe at the weekend you can have a chat. Maybe eh? at the weekend, yeah. Well, he's fighting soon also. He's got a good, tough fight. Yeah, man, Deontay is a powerful guy, but if I think if he keeps his mind strong, keeps his playfulness in there, keeps his sharpness and his elusiveness, I think he can do the job. This season, this year, mm -hmm. you want to be active. You want to work. Cowboy first, come through that, and then what? Because <clears throat> I know you've got a plan. I know you've got Yeah, you know, there. like, I, I actually, I, I, as I get into that, opponents, there's so many opponents, I don't, I actually don't have, like, a set. I have, there's many names, right? I just, it's Mads, about... Mads Vidal must appeal to you. Yeah, after, of course, after the year of that he's course he's in there, of course he's in there, no problem. I'd like to see him on the scales, then he keeps talking, he's too big, I want to see the man on the scales, let me see. But, uh, no, most certainly, that's there, because that, that BMF belt and all, that'd be nice to add to the, uh, to the, to the collection of belts that I have. Mm -hmm. The welterweight title, I'd like that also. Obviously, the rematch for the lightweight belt, or if Tony wins, it would be the to against Tony. Um, the options are there, but then there's also just little stragglers like Gagey that's floating around, and then there's Holloway, and then there's you know there's so many damn names. There's activity. I am going to remain in shape, remain in condition, and keep going. That's that's what got me to 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 where I to where I am. So for how long? Have you got a plan? A good year, anyway. Well. well uh, yeah, good year. this is going to be a phenomenal year. 2020, I'm kickstarting this year big style. Decade, so. man. You're kicking off a decade. Yes, yes. Oh, that's right. Oh, good man, good man. Yeah, well, there you go. I'll probably be doing, I, I certainly will be fighting up until, I'd say the 40s or something. You just don't know, man. I don't, so it's a, it's I a wild game, right? There's so much <laughs> politics and all this <laughs> that goes on backstage. I'd love to just give you a date and this, that and the other. Just know I'm going to be fit, healthy and ready. Good, man. How are you enjoying family life as well because it's, it's nice to see you on your Instagram playing mm. with the little ones yeah, yeah, or what it's have good. you. How, how much has that changed oh, your life? Oh, it's amazing. It's, it came at the right time for me, you know what I mean? I needed my kids and I'm very grateful. I'm very just my happy man. My heart is full, truly. They're here with me now. Mm -hmm. Is that a I'm blessing? obsessed with Toy Story, you know what I mean? And I'd be like... Which is your favourite? Come on. Well, I'm, I'd, I'd Which be, is your favourite? Like, my son's favourite is Buzz Lightyear and it's funny because Woody is like the cowboy and Buzz is the, you know what I mean? So I'm Buzz and Donald's cowboy. That's what we, I'm kind of messing around with me head. I was almost going to come out with a big Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, just... Toy Story's a year, so which is actually out since 1990. Now, he is not talking about that no, type no, of thing. No, 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 I'm going to say your little lad's referring to you as Buzz Lightyear. No, no, <laughs> no, no, he, no, Buzz Lightyear is Buzz Lightyear. I'm not Buzz Lightyear, okay, you know okay. what I mean? That's a pro... It, you know he's, a I mean? real, yeah, he's a superstar yeah. in your little boy's eyes. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's great, though, I have to say. And I, funny enough, I used to love Toy Story back in the day as well. It's 1997 that, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. that came out, and it's still rocking strong. We've got Toy Story 2 pace and everything in the damn thing. It's crazy, man, so... But it is a great, uh, great, great show. And just before I came here, they had it on in the house with me. The Korea loves it as well. My daughter loves it now. She's she's uh, just turned one. So, magic, uh, man. magic. Yeah, it's just it, it is. It's just a magic time, and and it's going to lead me to a magical performance on January 18th, and I know it is, and it's already set in stone. Maybe the last thing then for you is to step into movies, do some voiceover, really blow the mind mm. that you're the voice of Buzz, Buzz Lightyear <laughs> or something like yeah. that. But oh, it'd, it'd blow me son's mind. I tell you that he'd probably lose the head. He'd say, no, that's not him or something. <laughs> but uh, you never know. Look, show business is always there. I've, I've, I've dipped my toe in it, right? I've, I've produced my own movie. It was in at a red carpet and I played in premiere in the cinemas and all this type of thing. And it's done very well with Universal. We've we, we done real good with, with it. And I have the guys here with me now. And I'm, 
we have so much content. Right, we finished that first documentary on the DS2 rematch. Yeah, yeah. There's so much more content still that we have not. We, the, obviously, the double champ in New York City, the first event, we have all that. The Mayweather build up, the Khabib build up, even all the backstage, you know, all the stuff that we've got some world stuff. And now this, so we're just kind of rolling the footage, we, we, uh, field, fielding offers, and the show business and all that type of stuff is, is, is fun to play with. But right now, it's, it's the fight business, and, and that's my main passion. So there you go, Conor McGregor's going to become Scorsese at some point. Eh? Yeah, well, there you go. We're at, I, I like creating, you know what I mean? Listen, we're looking forward to the weekend. Thank man. you, sir. It's Appreciate great to have it. You back. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be back.